All of us cherish diverse aspects in life. For some, riches and triumph equate joy. So we strive during our 20s and 30s to build a legacy. For others, it's true love. They traverse the globe, heart exposed and eyes eager, in search of their twin flame. No matter the path in life, it's vital to grasp the rules that shape our cosmos. For by knowing them, you align with them, drawing in your wishes. I think you're really going to like this. And it's something that you really got to pay a lot of attention to. It's not something you learn overnight. But you get studying this and you can literally have anything you want. Before delving into using natural laws to draw in what you wish, we first must grasp their essence. In essence, natural law is an evident rule linked to nature's events. In a nutshell, these statutes regulate every event in the cosmos. These principles aren't benevolent or malevolent. They don't intend to aid or harm or lean towards optimism or pessimism. They simply exist. In their impartiality, they're exact. The hitch is, few recognize this. These laws guide our existence constantly, shaping our outcomes. Ever experienced a vision that soon became reality? Felt unease, and then your dread materialized? The universe remains indifferent to right or wrong. The notions you entertain, whatever their nature, materialize indifferent to consequences. The most famed natural principle is the law of attraction. Chances are you've come across YouTube clips, reels, and TikToks illustrating methods to magnetize desires, from abundant wealth to ideal homes and life partners. This law posits that the elements you emphasize in existence are those you draw in. Here, thoughts carry energy. Thus, thinking, I hope I don't fall ill, doesn't signal to the cosmos your wish for health. It senses your pessimism and apprehension, reflecting that same vibe back to you. A lot of people just use their imagination for, gosh, I hope this doesn't happen, or I hope that doesn't happen. They're letting it go in the wrong direction. The law of vibration, however, stands distinct. You see, it's the foundational rule, whereas the law of attraction plays a subsidiary role as vibration paves the way for attraction. Albert Einstein once expressed, everything is energy, that's the crux. Align with the frequency of your desired reality, and that reality is inevitably yours. It's not mere conjecture, it's physics. When you elevate your vibrational state to align with your aspirations, no barriers can deter you from magnetizing your desired outcome. When John Kennedy, when he was the President of the United States, asked the good doctor, the father of the space program, greatest scientist, you know, what it would take to build a rocket that'll carry a person to the moon and bring him back safely to Earth, he answered him in five words, he said, the will to do it. Such assurance and belief stem from profound trust in oneself and the cosmos. The universe perpetually shifts, and these shifts are vibrations. The pace or tempo at which it resonates is termed frequency. The sole variance between two entities is their frequency. Even items perceived as stationary or motionless, like a desk or a dwelling, oscillate, albeit at a languid pace. When you photograph mass, you can photograph the energy coming from it. You can photograph a, uh, a plant, and you'll see there's a vibration coming from the plant. Everything vibrates. A garden rock is vibrating. Everything moves. Nothing rests. Your body, however, vibrates at an extremely high rate, and it impacts more than you know. It starts right in your own mind, right in your own head. Your mind activates brain cells. And when those brain cells are activated, your impact, you impact the whole universe. Do you know that thought waves are cosmic waves that penetrate all time and space? 
Your mindset and emotions steer your body's vibrational state, and consequently, you wield the power to set the frequency at which you resonate. Your emotions, or your vibrations, magnetize individuals and elements in harmony with your vibrational level. In essence, you reap what you sow. If you're a pessimist, constantly pondering potential pitfalls, you'll draw like-minded souls, skeptical and reluctant to seek silver linings. If you're driven and tenacious, you'll surround yourself with peers sharing that zest and ambition. While it's valid to propose that thoughts materialize into reality, it's truer to assert that vibrations manifest as realities. The distinction between the law of attraction and vibration is, the former centers on aspirations, whereas the latter emphasizes the essence of your contribution for reciprocation. We teach here at the Proctor Gallagher Institute. We teach you the primary cause of the good that you desire. You take care of the cause, the effect always takes care of itself. So how might you adjust your thoughts and emotions to manifest your ideal existence? Bob Proctor provides the solution. Bob Proctor was a Canadian motivational writer famed for his New York Times bestseller, You Were Born Rich, and his participation in The Secret Film. He doesn't merely advocate employing the law of vibration for personal gain. Proctor has applied these strategies firsthand to uplift his own life. Transitioning from a directionless phase, he amassed wealth via his enterprise. I had really been struggling my whole life. Never had a half-decent job, had nothing really going for me. And here I am, owning a company that operates in seven cities, three countries. And I thought, how did it happen? As he describes, consciously directing your vibrational essence in the proper path can wield transformative power. Consequently, being attuned to your energy and that of individuals and objects around you can assist in lifting your vibrations to align with the frequency of your ambitions. How does this transpire? Quantum theory suggests that each universe particle is an energy manifestation. While microscopic analysis indicates that substances are collections of molecules and atoms resonating at specific rates. Remarkably, our physical form consists of 99.9% .9 void. In reality, most matter is primarily void, with the residual part being energy. Were we to compress every life form, eliminating the gaps between molecules, our entire species could be contained within a sugar cube space. This vast emptiness isn't futile. It enables atomic movement, electron manifestation, and wave operations, marking the quantum realm's backdrop in the void's emid mass. Predominantly, our bodies comprise quantum particles, many of which remain enigmatic. To this point, we've scarcely probed beneath 1% of our physiology, focusing mostly on tangible aspects. Being tangible entities, our comprehension extends to mass, matter, and atoms, giving their congruence with our sensory reality. Yet how do we fathom the intangible vastness? It escapes our sight and touch, yet it forms our core essence. The law of vibration thrives in this domain, or more specifically, within the spatial tremors we undergo atomically. It finds its foundation in quantum mysticism, anchored in quantum mechanics. This theme finds depth in literature, notably in Fritjof Capra's The Tao of Physics, emphasizing parallels between quantum mechanics and Eastern spiritualism. This was succeeded by Deepak Chopra's Quantum Healing, detailing mind-body rejuvenation through quantum perspectives, and later, Ageless Body, examining restorative practices, anti-aging, and eternal existence via a quantum lens. Fundamentally, our physical forms consist of data and energy, which we discern as tangible matter due to our limited understanding. Yet this domain remains under research. The quantum realm's operations remains mostly enigmatic, as its burgeoning discipline. It's continually evolving within scientific circles and retains an air of mystery. In the quantum dimension, 
if you hurled a ball at a barrier, it could re-emerge behind and strike you. These electrons exist ubiquitously and nowhere, all at once. Their absolute existence is only affirmed when observed, and the reason for this phenomenon remains unresolved. The wave-particle duality has been cited in the context of manifestation. Yet the reality is, even specialists in this arena can't pinpoint its mechanics. Hence, a concrete manifesting blueprint eludes us. We remain somewhat oblivious within the scope of quantum mysticism, seeking clarity from quantum mechanics whenever enlightenment may dawn. Yet, definitive comprehension isn't imperative. We can still pursue elevating our vibrational state and drawing a superior existence. The initial step is self-awareness, as it fundamentally hinges on our intuitive sense. Ever experienced an instinctual inkling? Logical reasoning leans one way after assessing pros and cons, but a distinct gut sensation or inner voice suggests an alternative. Or perhaps you've sensed a palpable tension in a room post-conflict, without glimpsing the occupants. The law of vibration correlates with your intuition, accounting for those inherent senses you experience. Opting for an alternate commute in evading a mishap or spontaneously staying home when chaos ensues at work. These instances underscore the law of vibration's subtle influence in your life. It might elude direct acknowledgement, but its presence is undeniable. As Van der Waal taught me, he says it's all in awareness, Bob. He said there's a marvelous inner world that exists within us. And the revelation of such a world enables us to do, to attain, to achieve anything we desire within the bounds or limits of nature. Why does this matter? It circles back to Einstein's sentiments. Aligning with the energy of what you yearn for inherently brings it into existence. In the dawn of the 2000s, a lady named Sally Gallagher joined one of Proctor's workshops. As a securities lawyer and in Proctor's terms, a monetary virtuoso, she was smitten with his doctrines. As fate would have it, Gallagher transitioned into Proctor's enterprise ally. This alliance was fortuitous, as while Proctor was accruing wealth, its management eluded him. He organically drew the ideal collaborator who addressed his predominant professional gap. And uh, I could just go ahead and do what I love doing. And I knew that our company was in good hands with that. And Sandy runs our company. She is the CEO and the president of the company. In essence, you need to recognize your desires and maintain that vision mentally for it to transition into actuality. Here's a different perspective. You're transferring this vision from your subconscious realm to your conscious awareness. It's the thoughts that you think in your conscious mind that you impress upon your subconscious mind that causes you to feel the way you feel. Feeling is conscious awareness of vibration. Those feelings are expressed with and through your physical body. That causes the action which produces the result. Now, getting them all lined up is called attitude. Now, some people line up on the negative side. They're going to see what's wrong. And you know something? They're right. <laughs> There's something wrong. Other people go on the positive side. They see what's good. And they're right. There's something good. You can find what's right or wrong in anything. Doesn't matter what you're looking at. We possess the capacity to conceive any thoughts we choose and these thoughts govern our emotions since we become deeply connected with them. This emotional connection subsequently drives behaviors that yield outcomes. Yet the challenge lies in the initial phase of this sequence. Cognition For many, genuine contemplation eludes them. Mere brain activity isn't equivalent to genuine thinking. Responses to abrupt noises, visual flashes, or presuming danger upon hearing a siren doesn't constitute true thought. You're endowed with more advanced cognitive abilities. Oh, they hear the word every now and then. You have perception, the will, reason, imagination, memory, intuition. 
These higher faculties are what literally separate us from all the rest of the animal kingdom. All the rest of the little animal kingdom, they're completely at home in their environment. They blend in. You and I are totally disoriented in our environment. And you can tap into this ability once you become aware. Are you aware of what you require from the universe? Yet, as you understand yourself a lot better, you're going to find your finances are going to improve. Your health is going to improve. Your relationships are going to improve. Your whole world starts to get better. The educated mind is also referred to sometimes as the intellectual mind. That's where all the intellectual factors are. Remember I told you what they were? You had perception, the will, reason, imagination, memory, and intuition. There's six of them. They are our mental muscles. And as you start to understand how to develop them, you can become a very powerful person. When you reach a profound consciousness of yourself and your goals, the horizons expand endlessly. Identify your calling and grasp onto that mental picture with every ounce of your essence, trusting that it's designated for you and you for it. Our cosmos is boundless, and even top physicists admit they don't fully grasp its entirety. It's teeming with vigor and potency, and with clear-mindedness, you can harness this dynamism for your own. Dedicate a moment today to re-engage with your inner self, to elevate your vibrational state and embody the existence you're destined for. If this video resonated with you and provided insight, kindly press the like button and subscribe for a continuous flow of enlightening and uplifting material. Appreciate your viewership.